Aloha and welcome to Sister Power. Sister Power's special guest is Erica Ingo. Erica recently joined the staff of Honolulu City Council member Kimberly Pine as communications director. While just last month she was one of the reporters who would seek out Kimberly Pine for interviews. And now she's helping former colleagues and competitors arrange those interviews. She started in radio in Hawaii Island and then moved to Honolulu, working at KSSK, AM, and FM, where she served as news director. Erica adapted to print journalism, working at Pacific Business News, then the Honolulu Star Advertiser as a business columnist and reporter. She was one of the inaugural writers at Crave, the weekly food section, which she calls the best assignment of her newspaper career. Erica did some TV as well at KGMB TV in the 80s and most recently at KHON2. She was named Small Business Journalist of the Year for the City and County of Honolulu by the U.S. Small Business Administration in 2008. Our topic for this episode, Be Phenomenal or Be Forgotten in 2020. Welcome, Erica. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to visit with Think Tech and Sister Power. So let's talk about Be Phenomenal or Be Forgotten in 2020. Well, first of all, congratulations on your new position. Thank you very much. It's such a blessing to have that job uh, with, you know, I never imagined a political career. Um, but now that I'm in the position, I, I don't think I would be if it weren't for Kimberly Pine. She is. Uh, an inspiration to me. Uh, I think she is a woman of integrity, and that's the only way I would have it, you know, entering the political realm, working for someone I believe in and who I think is trustworthy. And she's a phenomenal woman. Yes, she is. And that's our mutual friend, Kimberly Pine. And we have another mutual friend, of course, also. Yes. With uh, Ann Marotta, yes. marketing genius, the woman. So, uh, go yeah, ahead. Just uh, the A, M, and Murata advertising, marketing. She's just so brilliant. She is. <laughs> she is brilliant. So, tell us about your day-to-day -day task as being a communications director. One of the things that I do is check for various uh, publications, news outlets. I look for Kim, you know, stories that have been done about her, and I make a note of it and forward it to other members of the staff, just so that they're aware, oh, Kim was on KHON last night, or she's quoted in the Star Advertiser this morning, or Civil Beat. Um, I look for those sorts of media references um, and just make sure everyone in, on staff is aware. And I keep my own file, of course, media tracking for, uh, for all of that. And then, too, if anything comes across as needing to be corrected, I'm in a position to, to work with Councilmember Pine and you know, get any information that needs to be fixed. fixed. Uh, but so far, uh, that has not been the case. Oh, good. So yeah. you've been there about how long now? Only since September 23rd. So I'm still, uh, I'm not even a month on the job, but I am loving it. Oh my goodness. It, you know, because it's today it's October 17th. Yeah, almost a month. Almost a month. Mm -hmm. And previously, before that, we were talking about uh, K-H-O-N. Okay. I was a reporter from 2.30 to 10.30 p.m. on weekdays. The schedule was a little bit brutal for someone who's usually, you know, asleep by 10.30 at night. Sure. It was an adjustment. Um, so I'm, one of the reasons I, I like this new job is that I have normal human being hours again, which oh, is nice. Good, good. Well, looking ahead to 2020, give us some advice or tips about how to connect faster, commit smarter, communicate better. That's, that's a big subject. Yeah, right it there, is. The three point subject. So the first thing was connect better, connect faster, connect faster, uh, social platforms, um, Google news alerts, you know, they're free. Sign up for your Google news alert for whatever you're interested in uh, a keyword. Mine happens to be council member Kimberly Pine. Okay. Um, but then say there's a, a chef who, whose food you want to eat or whose recipes you love, 
You could do a Google alert about that, and it, you can get it as soon as it is found, or once a week, or you know, you can customize that search. So that's one way to get things faster. Also, your social platforms, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, I guess. I'm, I'm not on that one personally. Um, and then the second point was... Commit smarter. Commit smarter. Yes. Yes. Okay, what that means to me, what that speaks to yes. my heart is sometimes you see something on a social media platform and it makes your blood boil. Don't reply right away. Commit smarter. Take some time to formulate your thoughts. Don't be a troll, you know, that just flies off the handle and writes as you're flying off the handle and then, you know, you make someone upset. Why not make a more thoughtful response to whatever it is that set you off. Maybe think it through a little bit before you commit pen to paper, so to speak. And I'm glad we're talking about that because social media and Facebook is such a tool where people just fly off the handle. And I think that the younger generation, the millennials, should understand because you've been in this business and the journalism world and the media world for how long? 40 years. 40 years. That's wonderful. And, and your wisdom can teach them, your words follow you. Exactly right. Exactly right. Now, we mentioned, you know, when I started, we had a typewriter. I don't know if all <laughs> of you know what that is, but it was a machine that had a keyboard, and the printer was right in it. You know, you put the paper in, and you typed, and there were your words on this paper. Um, that could get thrown away and gone forever. Typing in the ether, that is forever. Yeah. Someone will find it, even if you delete it right away. It, somebody can find it. So you have to be very careful with your words. Like our grandmothers used to say, remember to keep your words nice and sweet, or one day those words you may have to eat. I like that. It's still true. It's true. Sure. So then we're talking about communicate better. Yes. And that taking time for more thoughtful responses is one way of communicating better. Um, I think a very undervalued skill, and it's maybe weird for me to say this because I had to have you repeat the parts of the question, but the th one of the main things that helps you communicate better is listening mm. more. Because, yeah, don't just listen for the pause that, you know, that allows you to speak now. Listen for what's actually being said. And if you listen and you're looking at the person who's speaking with you, if you have that luxury, you can see their face, their intention, the expression, and that sort of fills out the words that they're saying to you. And you can take that in, think about it a little bit, and not just knee-jerk react. This is why I think it's so important that we pick up the phone sometimes. Just pick up the phone sometimes and hear that warm voice and really you can hear what people are thinking and how they really feel about what's going on in their daily life. Yes, exactly right. There is a, a very popular meme on the internet, the social media. It may be posted on YouTube. I'm not sure the source of it, but you know Key and Peel, the comedians, the yes. comic team. Um, it, it, lent, it spoke to the power of Texting versus calling, like you're saying. So one texts the other something about, you know, they're going to meet up. And the other responds with, yeah, the intention of meeting up. But the way that the text was worded offended the other one. Oh. And so they, the other one who's replying thinks everything's good and, you know, we're going to connect later on. But this one is getting very upset. Because they're not talking on the phone. Mm -hmm. They can't hear the warmth of voice and all of that. So the person is ready for the meetup at the location. And the person who had been getting upset at the tone of the text, thinking it was too casual, like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. You know, he shows up with a baseball bat with spikes in the end. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> so we don't want it to escalate anything right. like that. But it just showed the power of... Uh, or how easily the written word can be misconstrued versus a phone call, like you say. Yeah, sure. Who inspired you 
to do what you're doing? Oh, that's a really good question. I think it's a multifaceted answer. Okay. I did not think about a journalism career in high school, um, but as a junior at Pohoa High in elementary on the Big Island, uh, all the radio stations on the uh, east side of Hawaii Island got an opportunity to go to one of the radio stations in Hilo and give a little high school report what's happening at your school this week. And so the student government took it on and I was head of the social committee or something like that. And so I went along and um, after the first two weeks, everybody else was like, Erica, you do it. Um, you know, I have piano and lessons and everyone else found a reason to not do it. So I, I was a little nervous being the only one, but I actually went around to the various uh, student government leaders um, and, you know, whoever was relevant this particular week, wrote my notes of what they told me was going on. And then I would write a report and go to the radio station once a week and do my five minutes. And that was really fun. But I still wasn't thinking about a journalism career. I just thought radio looked like fun. Yeah. I wanted to do that play music and, and all of that. Um, went to school for a little while, took a journalism class, and just got an opportunity to be an intern for one of the DJs in Honolulu. And I, I just leapt at the opportunity. Um, and that was Michael W. Perry back at KKUA. Right. AM 690 in um, 1979 um, or 78. Yeah, and so it was unpaid, but it was so much fun. I'd go to the station three days a week and pull his music and commercials and help him answer phones and just the vibe. It was so exciting. Um, and then went to intern for him. I guess there was a summer break or something, and I went came back to Honolulu, and he said, hey, if you're going back to school, I can use an intern, but I'm at uh, KSSK now. Well, it was called KGMB Radio at that time. I'm at K59. But sure, I'll do it. And hey, we might have a part-time job. What? <laughs> so yeah, I, I went for that opportunity. Okay. It was, so that's how I got into radio. And then I got an opportunity in the news department, and that's where my passion started. I'm not really a DJ. But, but give me something to research and report on, I'm all over it. I love that. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you know, in 30 seconds or less, less inclusion is the currency of the future. Yes. Tell us fresh ways in about 20 seconds to engage, collaborate, and innovate. And we can just start with engage and then come back after break. That sounds good. Um, I think engagement starts with listening with an open mind and learning how you can best engage with that person who's in front of you. Oh, I like that. Well, we'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back to Sister Power. We have a special guest, Erica Ingo, who is the Communications Director for Kim Council Member Kimberly Pine. And our topic for this episode, be phenomenal or be forgotten in 2020. And before we went to break, we were chatting about um, 
Inclusion yes. is a currency of the future, and we were talking about fresh ways to engage. And yes. you talk about engage. So let's talk about collabor collaborate and innovate. Okay. So collaborate. Engaging, I think I mentioned, starts with listening. Um, collaborating then mm, could include contributing your own ideas. And like Play Doh, right? There's an idea. Oh, and they have an idea. Let's see how we can shape this Play-Doh. I'm a mom, can you tell? I'm talking about Play-Doh. <laughs> That's right, yes. You have, you, you, you have, you're a mother of four. I am, and they're all grown. I don't step on Legos on the carpet anymore, okay. thank God. <laughs> right. But yeah, here I am using Play-Doh as, as an illustration tool. But yeah, ideas all on the table, and then you formulate them into something bigger than that was, which was placed on the table in the beginning. Um, that is kind of a visual illustration, I guess, of, of collaboration. Those are good tools because this is what's going to empower us for 2020. 2020 is a big year for uh, everyone, especially women, yes. I, I feel. So what lessons has your work life taught you? Research, research, research. Uh, I don't want to single out any one website, but I will tell you that in journalism, uh, we don't rely on Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, it, it might be kind of a good starting point, but it's it's not your be all end all. You can't have you can't attribute factual information to Wikipedia. Um, so you you do need, do need to consider all of the sources that you're using for this research. Mm -hmm. um, so know your facts, and that way you will have firm ground upon which to stand when it is when you're saying whatever it is that you're going to say or speak about. That's very important as we see what has been happening over the course of a few months is yes. know your facts. Exactly right. Exactly right. I mean that's one of the canons of journalism and it's it really should be applied to life in general. <laughs> know your facts before opening the mouth. Yeah. It would be nice if everyone felt that way, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. <laughs> and How on refreshing. that note, <laughs> well, what is your definition of a fearless woman? Oh, someone who has been through a lot. And I think we've all been through a lot at some level. I'm, I'm a widow. Uh, I was a single mother twice. Um, first marriage, the practice husband, that didn't go well. And then my forever love died, leaving me with four young ones. So, but you know, there are so many women who have been through so much. The, a world of, of tragedy and trauma and difficulty. And the, a fearless woman has been through things and just keeps putting one foot in front of the other. Every day is a new day. The next minute is a new minute. Anything could happen. Uh, you just keep moving forward. Oh, I like that. I like it. And it's how you handle your disappointments. And, and I think speaking up for yourself, standing up for yourself, whether you know, people agree with you or, or not. Absolutely. Just having that confidence. Mm -hmm. So what do you consider? Even if you're trembling on the inside. Even if you're trembling on, I like that. E mm -hmm. So you're not... As they say, don't let people, don't, what, what Never does that let say? Them see you sweat. Never let them see you sweat. Yes, that's right. You might be, yeah. but like, no, I am not. Did you see Game of Thrones, any of those episodes? No, I did There was not. this fearless young female character, and uh, one of the kind of buzz phrases is with the question, what do we say to the god of death? And Arya Stark, this character, said, not today. Not today. All right, I like I that. Just, yeah, so that I took, I internalized that big time. Sure, <laughs> sure. Who do you consider your greatest mentor and why? I would have to say my dad. Your dad? We, he was, uh, golly, he taught me so much about so many things. Uh, he was determined just a small example. He was determined that I would learn how to drive uh, on, on a stick shift, manual transmission, because if I could drive that, I could drive anything. And 
So after years of being a minivan mom, what did I just get myself? A, a stick shift. Six speed, I have so much fun driving it. Okay. The other thing was, and this is also a very simple thing, we always kept a dictionary by the dinner table because he was pretty learned, um, was an engineer by trade, but he would come out with these words in the course of dinner conversation and I'd look at him and he'd say, get the dictionary. So after a while, it just became like, all right, I'll get the dictionary. Do and your so research again. Do my research. And I would look up, and the dictionary became one of my favorite books of all time. Um, yeah. So those, those little things uh, contributed to his being my biggest mentor. My mother would be another one. Same level, but for different reasons. Sure, sure. Yeah. What advice would you give your younger self? In this business for 40 years, in journalism mm. and in the media, what advice would you give your younger self to pass on to the next generation? Mm. You're stronger than you think you are. Don't take no for an answer. Just keep trying, putting one foot forward in front of the other. Uh, and Boy, I don't know if I can say this without using a naughty word. <laughs> Take no guff from okay. anyone. Mm -hmm. We got you. Yeah, yeah. that's not a na naughty word. No. That's, that's no. in place of. Um, yeah, standing up for yourself. I, I think I would, I would have, that's what I would tell my younger self. Okay. Things I wish I had known when I were younger. Well, that makes you phenomenal. Going into so. 2020, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, because now you know the do's and don'ts. Exactly right. Exactly. That's, that's the beauty of, of wisdom, I feel. So, any other professional pursuits on the horizon? Well, I, n nothing set up or in place, but I'd like to return to cookbook editing, which I did for a while, love that. And uh, I was taking culinary continuing ed classes at KCC, but the program changed a little bit, so it's not the same that you could just take a class here and there. Loved that. Okay. And um, oh, being there to support my, my kids. It's weird to call them kids when they're 31, going to be 30, and then my twins are 26. Oh, you have twins. Twin sons. They're six four. <laughs> oh my! They live here. Yes, they okay. they live at home with me, so uh, I don't have to ever get on a step stool to reach a tall casserole dish that's in the kitchen. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful! What advice would you give women in order to keep their seat at the table? Mm. Know when to listen. I'm never going to say know when to shut up but formulate carefully what you're going to say and avoid being shrill. That doesn't mean don't be loud. You can be loud without being shrill. You know what I'm saying? Kind of the high pitch. Rosie Perez, when she gets a little bit amped up, don't be that. Okay. Yeah, All right. because men don't take that seriously. Because it's, it's more being, with confidence, calm and cool and collective. Yes. But stern. Absolutely. Yes. Let them see the power. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Because it's all about empowering and motivating and educating people exactly in whatever you're right. doing. Mm -hmm. All right. What does it take to be recognized as an emerging leader? That is a really excellent question. I think... I think Tulsi Gabbard is doing a good job of getting noticed. This is not uh, to say anything about her politically. I'm just talking about her methodology in, in getting on television and in, you know, coverage nationally. Um, she is doing a good job of that. So if I had to come up with an example on the national level, it would okay. be her. But for that matter, Councilmember Pine has gotten some national coverage for her uh, bill about tourism and having visitors sign a uh, Keep Hawaii Hawaii pledge. Um, it's a promise to our keiki, after all, to keep Hawaii nice for them as they grow and they have children. Um, 
I think be strong in your convictions, be able to make a decision, tell the truth, stand by your word. Acknowledge when you're wrong, if you are wrong. That's being a woman, and that's being <laughs> a man. <laughs> you can acknowledge that when you're wrong. And I think saying, I'm sorry. Yes, I agree with you. Saying, I, I I'm guess, sorry. Yeah, the acknowledging wrong, saying, I'm sorry. Exactly right. Chief Susan Ballard impressed the heck out of me after the recent HPD um, false alarm when yes. all of our uh, emergency alerts went off. And for people who don't know who Susan Ballard is, she's the chief of police. Is she, that she's is the right. first woman chief of police? To or? my knowledge, she is okay. the first female chief of the Honolulu Police Department. Okay. And she was on, I guess, every newscast that night saying, you know, it was us. Uh, we made a mistake. I'm sorry. Um, and we're going to take these steps, the following steps, to fix it and make sure it never happens again. I thought that was fantastic. Woman or not, um, but that she was, that she is a woman, I think um, it speaks even better of her than the other chiefs. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> it's the truth. We want to speak our truths. Exactly right. What is the key to success when communicating with the public? Truth, absolute truth, and there are perhaps some truths that are still forming, let's say, um, things that can't yet be talked about, but address it saying, you know, we're not ready to talk about that right now, um, but when we are, we'll let you know. I think being forthright about things you can't talk about instead of, you know, making something up that sounds disingenuous. <laughs> That's not a good idea ever. So always truthful to the degree that you can speak to something, do that. If you can't talk about something yet, say that. I think journalists respect that. It frustrates them because they want to know right now. Yeah. But, um, but you know, there are reasons that sometimes information gets withheld. You have given us so many tools and ideas about being phenomenal or be forgotten in 2020. Thank you. And I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, Erica Ingle, for taking the time to come in and speak with us and sharing your knowledge with us. On behalf of Think Tech Hawaii and Sister Power, thank you for spending part of your day with us. Oceans of Aloha, peace and love.